Maritza. Bella Wiggins steps in, and the first pitch misses. We are off and running here at Rhodes. And immediately UAB starting off with the nation's leader in triples, Bella Wiggins, the junior from Fairhope, Alabama. Wiggins all over the place in the AAC ranks as well. Top 10 in OBP. Two. That's fouled away. Down the left side. Nice job by Jayla Torrance working her way back in the set bat. It was down 2-0. Now she's worked her way back to get two strikes. That's on the ground to first and a race for the bag. But Broadfoot makes the tag for out number one. And there you see the head coach for the Blazers, A.J. Doherty, last year's Conference USA Coach of the Year, now with the American Athletic Conference, UAB's first season in that league. And Coach Doherty, a former manager here at Alabama. And someone that could be inspiring to coaches at any level. He started out coaching in high school, and then he went to the JUCO level, and now he's at the Division I level and starting to build his team with his culture at UAB. There's Dorset to left. Catch made, two gone. <laughs> Incepts the junior, Lindsey Smith out of Hayden, Alabama. To your point though about Coach Doherty, we were chatting with him pregame and he was talking about how exciting this year has been, how he's enjoyed watching this team bond and grow and how they've had to adjust a little bit to AAC life. Yeah, it's awesome to see him come in and be Conference USA Coach of the Year in his first season with UAB and then now navigating the change to the AAC. UAB coming off of a tough weekend. Last time out at FAU, a team that is really one of the bright spots in the league this year. They're off to a great start. Yeah, they got some grad transfers in. They're hitting the ball really well and Coach Doherty had nothing but good things to say about that program and the games that they played this past weekend, how competitive they were. 2-2 Two -two to Smith. Just misses, full count. Lindsey Smith, another one of those all over the place in the AAC category ranks. Seventh in slugging, RBIs, and doubles. Looking for her first hit of her career against Alabama. She'll swing and miss there, and Jayla Torrance has a clean. Jenna Johnson will start things off at the top of the order. Where she's been for most of the year. Callie Hevlin back in the two spot. Abby Dukeshire batting third. And Kendall Clark, a real highlight for the Tide last night. On the ground to short. And well played by Dorset for out number one. And those are the kind of outs that Olivia Volback will be looking for in the circle. She works a lot of down, throws a lot of drop, Kaylee. She's a pitch to contact type of pitcher. You're going to see a lot of ground balls. But everything is down, really good drop. And when her off speed 
has the separation from her drop. That's when she's really successful. So going to try to slow down that off speed. But a lot of ground balls that we'll see today. And Coach Doherty brought up the good point that Fallback has had success against Alabama in the past. Previously in Birmingham, had a nine strikeout game, gave up just two runs and a 2-1 victory for the Crimson Tide. And so she'll try and recreate that here tonight, now facing Callie Hevelin. Junior out of Three Rivers, Michigan. Hevelin, a career 364 hitter against UAB. And that's well hit out to right. Miles retreats. It's over her head. Callie Hevelin will slide into second. And it's a one out double for the Crimson Tide here in the first. Callie Hevelin putting on a clinic for how you hit a drop ball pitcher early in this game. She lets the pitch get deep. You see here, there she's letting it get deep right on the barrel. Hits it out there to right field. Hannah Miles took a couple steps in, and that ball got over her head for a double. Great piece of hitting by Callie Hevelin. And now Abby Dukeshire, the sophomore from Kindred, North Dakota, has seen the numbers jump significantly here this year. Now hitting 370, leads the team in RBIs as well. And in her career against UAB, a 500 hitter with five RBIs on four hits. Yeah, and she actually had all those five RBIs in one game. A really good performance from her at the beginning of the season. And there you see that season comparison, those numbers jumping. Limited opportunities last year, only played in 35 games, already played in 28 this season, but she's found herself starting every day in that three hole because of that 370 batting average, six home runs and 26 RBIs. And Abby Dukesher initially started the year in the sixth spot in the opener against Villanova, but was in the three hole for game three against Georgia Tech and has been there pretty much every day since. And big reason why, the hits and also the ability to get on base as she draws the walk. And here's the player that you talked about, Kaylee. Marley Giles, two career hits against UAB, both home runs that came earlier this year. And she's been seeing the ball well lately, too. Had a good series against Florida, some good hits against Florida State. And the sophomore class for Alabama as a whole has really stepped up this year. Kinlinka Halen, we highlighted Abby Dukesher, Marley Giles. Just a lot of growth over the offseason for that whole class. Well, Marley Giles trying to contribute to improvement situationally for the Alabama offense. Last night against Sanford, the tide hit really well in moments like this. But Giles swings and misses, and Volback has a big strikeout for out number two. There's that drop from Volback with just stellar movement. You're seeing everything bite and break at the perfect time. And it's going to be interesting to see what adjustment Alabama hitters make, whether they scoot up in the box and try to hit that. Looks like Kinlinka Halen is going to get up in the box, try to attack it before it breaks. Yeah, there's Kahalen, part of that sophomore class you were just mentioning out of Trustville, Alabama. Another 500 career hitter against UAB, 7 of 14 with four RBIs on a four-game hit streak. All have been hits for extra bases. And she stripes that to center. Wiggins will make the catch to in the inning. So Volback gets out of it, and we go to it was awesome to hear him talk about how Coach Murphy has mentored him 
and he said he would not be the coach at UAB if it wasn't for his relationship with Coach Murphy, which I thought was so awesome to hear. Yeah, I mentioned as well, it's nice to have somebody that's so close, who's seen it all, who knows so much about the sport, the landscape of the sport, has seen all the shifts over the years as well. That's how the sport grows. We had Mike Andrea in the house a couple weeks ago and Coach Murphy was talking about how Mike had, had impacted him. Hevelin could not field it cleanly. It was well placed by Volback, and she is aboard here in the top of the second. And back to that, just how Coach Murphy has affected Coach Darty, and then Coach Darty will go and do that for his assistant coaches, and that's how the game has grown as a whole and why we're seeing it continue to get better year after year in every single conference. Well, parity at an all-time high in college softball. UAB trying to make some noise here in the top of the second. Alyssa Aguilar will show Bunn again and lay it down. Torrance, the throw is wide. Volback will head for home and she'll slide in safely. Aguilar stands at second and UAB leads 1-0 here in the second. Alyssa Aguilar did her job perfectly laying down this bunt. The issue is that this needs to be fielded by Bailey Dowling. Jayla Torrance ends up taking it. She's been throwing underhand the whole game, makes a mistake on the throw, and that allows Volback to score all the way from first base. And some energy for UAB early in this game. They were shut out the last two times they saw Alabama. So you know they came in here hungry to score a run. Throwing error charge to Jayla Torrance. And now Aguilar standing on second, nobody out. Kaylee Collette, the sophomore at the plate. UAB looking for more. And another bunt, this time it is Dowling. One down, but the runner does move to third. Well, you see the history between these two. Alabama has won every matchup, 32-0. This is the third time these squads have met this year. Alabama leads 16-0 here in Tuscaloosa. There have been some tight battles over the years, and right now UAB trying to make a statement early as Drody takes that one inside. And as much respect as Coach Darty has for Coach Murphy, you know he wants to come in here and get a win at Road Stadium. One run already in, looking for more with Drody, the junior out of Iota, Louisiana. 0 for 9 this year against SEC teams. One hit would score another run. Giles saved a run there, perhaps, with that stop. Giles is so athletic behind the plate. Nice job getting up and getting that ball, saving a run. Got her. Strikeout for Torrance for out number two. In the scouting report, I highlighted that when Jayla Torrance has her curve moving, that's when she has success. She got the strikeout on the curve in the first inning, goes back to it here, gets the swing and miss. That ball is so hard to catch up to because it's 68 miles an hour and it has that late break. Torrance trying to get out of this situation, but now she faces the Tuscaloosa native, Hannah Miles at the plate. Sophomore who was all freshmen in Conference USA last year. Attended American Christian Academy, same high school as Alabama's Cat Grill.
That's lifted out to right, and it will drop. Clark couldn't make the catch, and Miles has the RBI to make it 2-0. A miscommunication and some hesitation out there in right field. Callie Hevlin doesn't know if she's going to go get it, and neither does Kendall Clark. One of them has to call each other off, but neither does, and that ball ends up dropping for a run scored. So the Tuscaloosa native comes up big. And now Auburn Dupree, the Georgia Tech transfer, will try and keep the inning going. Well-placed bunt, Torrance's throw took Broadfoot off the bag. I don't know if Jayla Torrance would have gotten her even if this throw was on the money. It's a really great bunt from Auburn Dupree. She's got speed and tries to work her way on with two outs, ends up being successful. Yeah, it is rightfully scored. Place bunts. Well, it's not really Jayla Torrance's fault at this point that the ball that was dropped in right field isn't on her, and she's made some good pitches here and there. I would tell her that you've got two outs. You need to make one good pitch, and you're going to be out of this inning, and your offense is hopefully going to have your back and, and respond in the next, next inning. But something we haven't mentioned is that Ashley Pringy, former Alabama infielder, is on staff for UAB. She was a teammate of Jayla Torrance, faced her many times. So I'm sure she's talking to those hitters, letting them know what adjustments need to be made. And that's what we're seeing early in this game. That's an excellent point. You see Ashley Prangy right there in the UAB dugout. And the top of the order has a chance here with Wiggins now down on the count one and two. But a couple base hits by the eight and nine hitters, Miles and Dupree. And now the nation's leader in triples stands in. Giles will throw back, but Miles slides in safely. Wiggins to short, and the flip from Kahalen ends the frame. But UAB grabs two, helped by a few mistakes from Alabama. 7-8 due up, starting off with Bailey Dowling against Volback. First pitch to short. Dorsett's throw is in time. Spectacular from the freshman for out number one. This is a really good play from Hannah Dorsett in the 5-6 hole. Goes over and gets it on her backhand and makes a great throw over to first base. We highlighted how good she is at the plate, but she's got the defense to go with it. Now Kendall Clark, the junior who transferred in from Des Moines Area Community College, had a great night last night, two for two against Sanford. And as we talked about, back in Birmingham against UAB, had a home run. In fact, in the games against the Blazers, two for two with two RBIs, a homer, two walks, and two runs scored. I love how she swings with so much intent and power. When she hits it, she hits it hard. And that's something that's been a focus for Patrick Murphy and something he wanted to see tonight is just hard hit balls, square it up. There you see the Hall of Famer in the third base coaching box. Patrick Murphy, the head coach. <laughs> 25 straight trips to the NCAA tournament. 14 appearances in OKC. Dorset, nice slide, and the throw is in time! Look at that freshman go. Hannah Dorsett does it again, this time going to her forehand. Gets the ground ball behind second base, slides to get it, and then gets up and makes the throw. Helped a little bit by her first baseman, Alyssa Aguilar, with a good pick over there. 
but a huge out number two. And now Emma Broadfoot steps in with two gone and the base is clear. Senior from Danville, transferred in from North Alabama. If I'm Olivia Volbach and I see my shortstop is making plays like that tonight, I'm feeling good knowing that I'm a ground ball pitcher. That's over to third and a little easier play for Smith. Side retire. Providing a lot of help to these UAB hitters. She's faced Jayla Torrance. She's seen Jayla Torrance and she knows what to do against Jayla Torrance. And her role on that staff is helping the hitters make adjustments from at bat to at bat, get better her second and third time through the lineup. She is one of my favorite teammates of all time, not just because of the player she is, but the person she is. And I know she's bringing a lot of great intangibles to that UAB staff. It was great to see Ashley Pringy before the game get to chat about how much she loves this job with UAB. And now Jayla Torrance is trying to find a response as well after UAB got two runs in the second. Nice quick out of Dorset to start off the third. Yeah, at this point, Jayla's job is to hold them and allow her offense a chance to get them back in this game. Dowling sends Torrance away and comes in to make the catch, which will retire Lindsey Smith. Two down. Here's Olivia Volback, singled and scored in the second. Of course, a big night across college softball. Sometimes you get those midweeks where everything feels like it's happening, and tonight is one of those. And we love those nights because oh, yeah. there's so much softball to watch, so much to follow up here in the booth. And we'll be keeping up to date on a few of the things around the country. We also saw last night a shocking upset. Tulsa shut out Oklahoma State. UAB trying to do the same thing here on this Wednesday. Payoff to Volbeck. Fouled away. Ball back out to right. And this time Clark is there to make the catch. One, two, three for Torrance. Bama Bats coming back. Accused by the committee when seeding for the NCAA tournament. And Alabama, again, holding at eight, but trying to avoid a loss that would be pretty damaging. UAB currently sitting at 111. And losses like that are things that can really dip that metric down. Yeah, it definitely would, especially considering that RPI does take into account home and away, and losing at home is never good. That's a good start to this third from the freshman Lauren Johnson. Second hit for Alabama. Lead off on. Lauren Johnson's been a really bright spot offensively for Alabama. He's hitting 343, was the first SEC freshman of the week this year and has worked her way in the outfield at times. And always a threat to run as well. Seven of nine in stolen bases this year. And her older sister, Jenna, stands in the box 0 for 1 with a ground out here tonight. 
There goes little sister Lauren. What a throw. Got her. Drody mows her down. And there's one away. Mackenzie Drody was ready for this behind the plate. Gets a ball right down the middle. Makes a great throw. And Lauren Johnson just slides into that tag. Perfect execution. And now Johnson sends one to right. That's carrying and it's gone. Jenna Johnson, a solo homer out to right. And Alabama's on the board here in the third. That ball just kept carrying out to right field. Hannah Miles was trying to track it. The right fielder kept drifting and the ball just kept going. But again, this is the type of hitting that Alabama has to have to be able to beat Olivia Ball back on a drop ball pitcher. You've got to wait on it. You've got to let it get deep and attack it to the opposite side of the field. I saw Callie Hevlin with a double in the first inning and now Jenna Johnson with a home run, letting that ball get really deep and attacking it. And that's where the stolen base really cost you because we'd be looking at a tie ball game Yeah, instead, just one run for Alabama. It's the second homer of the year for Johnson against UAB. And you mentioned that double by Callie Hevlin. She's in the box now. Just the third home run allowed by Volback this year. And that one hit Hevlin. She'll head for first. Kelly Hevelin trying to get out of the way of it, but just clips that back leg. And now she's on first. And that's such an important at bat after the home run. And she'll scoot her way over to second on the pass ball. but. Again, when someone hits a home run, you as the next batter want to keep the attack going, want to keep the rally going, and find your way on to keep putting the pressure on the defense and the pitcher. And now time called. Now facing a big moment with Dukeshire standing in. What impresses me about Olivia Volback is you can tell that some of her drop balls have a lot of bite, and then other ones just have a little bit less of a bite and stay in the zone. So as a hitter, it's, it's hard to navigate whether the pitch is gonna stay in the zone as a strike or it's gonna keep dropping. And that's how she has her success is getting you guessing. Well, a couple wild pitches have now moved Hevelin to third and a 3-0 count to Dukesher, who has already walked once in this ball game. Full count. And there's ball four. Dukesher will head to first, runners on the corners. Patrick Murphy will turn to a pinch runner. Kenley Pate will head to first. Mess sets the table for Marley Giles. Struck out her first time up. That was a situation in the first with two on and one out. Here she is now with two on and one out in the third. And as we talked about, that was an area where Alabama offensively last night thrived. Situationally, eight of 15 with runners on and a 
really sparkling 7 of 11 with runners in scoring position. Yeah, that risk number really sticks out to me. 7 of 11. You're going to be very successful when you're seeing that and over 500 with runners on. An area where they want to keep getting better, especially in their conference games. One, two. Got her again. Pate will take off for second. But it's another strikeout for Volbeck. And now two are down here in the third. Volbeck doing a really good job of doing what she does best, getting over the top of it, drop ball. And when you have Mackenzie Jody behind the plate, you're really confident in letting it skip the dirt. There's Kahalen out to center. One run will score, Pate will race for home, and Alabama's in front, thanks to Kinley Kahalen. This is the situational hitting we were talking about that we saw last night. Kinley Kahalen gets the first pitch, attacks it, gets it past the second baseman, out into the outfield, and that'll score two runs. And now Alabama's got the lead here in the third. And here's Dowling, 0 for 1. It was a well-played ground out. Dorset at short. Made a great stop and throw to retire Dowling. That's off of Volbeck. And the ball rolls into no man's land. Two are on. Bailey Dowling hits this ball really hard. And Olivia Volbeck is usually a shortstop. So she is a good defender, but she just can't make the play on that hard hit ball. Now Alabama is trying to keep a two out rally going. Base hit for Dowling. Four hits in the inning for the Crimson Tide. And now a 2-0 count to Kendall Clark. 0 for 1 was also retired thanks to a great play at short by Dorset. Back nearing 30 pitches in this inning. You can tell Alabama is starting to make the adjustments. They're taking good pitches, hitting balls a little bit harder. Clark, that's hit hard, but Colette is able to collect herself. And in the inning, runs allowed by Jayla Torrance, Jenna Johnson, a solo homer in the last frame, and Kenley Kahaling. Now a five-game hit streak after the two RBI single. And we'll see what UAB can do in response with Aguilar. It was Aguilar's bunt in the second that kind of got everything rolling for the Blazers. It was well placed, created an error. She later came on to score. <laughs> to third, one away. has done a good job since that second inning. Working quick outs, you can tell she's using her rise ball a little bit more. Oh, 
one to Colette. And now 0 and 2. That's popped up. This time, Hevelin ranges over to make the catch. <laughs> in steps Drody, strikeout victim back in the second. That one almost got her. Jordy taking some big swings on Jayla Torrance. And you know, if you just move the ball at all, You'll find some success. Two two. That's sent skyward by Jody. And right to Kendall Clark. Two in the inning. Jayla Torrance, another heard of a sophomore slump. She has been absolutely on fire since that matchup with UCLA at the Mary Nutter. Tennessee has been darn near untouchable and it's really started with Pickens and hey Kiki Malloy a 595 batting average so far in the month of March. Tennessee was one of those teams that we knew was going to be good coming into this year. They had that really good run at the Women's College World Series last year but only losing Ashley Rogers and Carlin Pickens stepping in and taking a lot of the innings this year. But I want to go back to that Ole Miss win against LSU because I think that was the story from this past weekend. No one expected them to go in in the bottom of the SEC and take that series. Emma Broadfoot hitting this ball really hard to the shortstop, Hannah Dorsett. She's made some good plays today. She's got that one. But again, just a really stellar performance from Ole Miss and just shows how strong the SEC is top to bottom. Well, and it all ties together because... Back on March 1st, in Oxford, UAB went and took down Ole Miss, a 6-4 win for the Blazers. Complete game victory for Leah Kirby in the circle. Bella Wiggins was just dynamite that night. UAB looking for similar magic against another SEC foe here in Tuscaloosa. And it's those kind of wins that give a team the confidence they need, especially when they're moving conferences, going into the American, having a win over Ole Miss and playing in these strong games helps them out. Man, Dorsett's having a great game at short. Two down. A turn for them on the energy side. And we saw them score two more runs in that half of the inning. After the first pitch ball, there's a strike. You mentioned it earlier. Jenna Johnson got SEC Co-Player of the Week after her performance in the Green and Gold Classic in Birmingham, second team all-conference last year. And this time she'll hit one to Wiggins, who runs in and makes the catch for out number three. Nothing doing for the tight offense. Ball back to... And 
And now Jayla Torrance trying to keep the Blazers where they are. Three to two Alabama. Eight nine one due up for UAB. RBI single for Miles in the second. And that's past Hevlin. Two for two night for Hannah Miles. And back in her hometown, the Tuscaloosa native is thriving and she's on to lead off the fifth. She just got her barrel to that pitch, allowing her to hit it hard and get it past Callie Hevlin, who's a really good defender. And Hannah Miles having a really good night, two for two. Junior from Gadsden, Alabama. When, as we talked about, UAB in their first season in the American Athletic Conference, conference realignment, of course, a gigantic story across all of college sports the last few years. And it's an AAC that's got a whole new look. No UCF, no Houston. They're off to the Big 12. Blazers pick sixth in the preseason poll, but a little wide open. FAU has been a nice surprise. Owls have looked strong this year. Wichita State, of course, always impressive. Charlotte has some nice wins. Yeah, Charlotte's a really good team. And so is Wichita State every year. And then we talked about Tulsa beating Oklahoma State last night. So they're at the bottom half of that poll just showing how strong that conference is. And I feel like we have that conversation about every conference we put up because the level of softball is just getting so good. And that one got away from Giles. So Miles now stands on second. Wild pitch for Torrance and a 1-2 on Dupree. <laughs> Dupree off the glove of Torrance. Miles will round third. And UAB ties it up and now it's thrown away. The ricochet went back to Broadfoot, but Auburn Dupree gives UAB a run, and we're even at three. Auburn Dupree just hitting this ball hard, putting it on the ground, tips off the glove of Jayla Torrance, and Hannah Miles has speed. She's gonna score from second on anything in the outfield. Alabama's lucky that overthrow did not cost them another base. But this is a completely different game than what we saw in the first two matchups between these teams. You can tell UAB has had a lot of growth over the season. Coming in against the top of the lineup, tie ball game. Different look and try to shut this offense down. Dupree takes off. The throw is there from Giles. One down. Marley Giles is so good behind the plate at throwing runners out. She was ready for this one. Gets up, throws a bullet to second base. And Auburn Dupree is out by a step. That's on the ground to Kahalen. Quick throw gets Wiggins for out number two. And to your point, now Alabama catchers have thrown out half the base stealers that have tried to swipe a bag against them this year. Opponent six for 12 in stolen bases. Base is clear for Hannah Dorsett, the freshman from Trustful, Alabama. Longtime friend and teammate of Alabama shortstop Kenley Kahalen. <laughs> and 
And Dorset grounds it to Kahalen. Inning over. But UAB gets a run. Don't go any season ago. Two of the best bats in the entire country, let alone the SEC. That's going to be a really good matchup, especially I'm, I'm hoping that we see a lot of offense. I love especially being a hitter, seeing a lot of hitting. But um, with the question marks around Kentucky's pitching and Florida having three freshmen on their staff, I'm interested to see the scores of that game and obviously seeing two of the best players in the conference go against each other in Koffel and Skylar Wallace. There's Hevlin, and that gets through. Lead-off single for Callie Hevlin, who's having a nice night. And to your point, though, about that Kentucky Florida series. Keegan Rothrock in the circle. You mentioned her. Kentucky has not seen Stephanie Schoonover be as sharp as maybe they were accustomed to. Dealt with injuries so much last year and had a good start this year, but struggled to put away Ohio State last weekend. It could really be kind of a necessary statement for Kentucky if they can go into Gainesville and at least play well based off of how things have gone the last few weeks. Yeah, they got swept by LSU, and last year Schoonover had really emerged as that ace, had so many good performances, especially in conference play, and they just haven't had that person rise up in the circle and take oh, the quality innings. There's Smith at third. Chance for two is unsuccessful, but one down. And again, on the other side, you know, Florida was here at Alabama a couple weekends ago, and I was here to watch that game again. I mean, on both sides, I think there's question marks with the pitching staff, and, but Florida's offense, the numbers are insane, and Kentucky always has power. So that's a series that I'm going to be excited to watch. Well, Marley Giles is due up, but she struck out twice against Volback. I have to think that conversation between Patrick Murphy and Adam Arbor was about whether to stick with Giles or maybe turn to the bench, but it will be Giles. With Dukesher on first and one out, Alabama looking to answer after UAB tied it up in the top of the fifth. Well, Giles has really emerged as an everyday starter for Alabama. She's done well behind the plate, and I think if you're Patrick Murphy or Adam Arbor and you're having that conversation, it would be really good for her to get a hit and come away with that fresh in her mind going into this weekend rather than the two strikeouts and coming out for a pinch hitter. Both hits by Giles this year against UAB have left the yard, but now a 3-0 count. Three-one from ball back, fouled away. With Giles, you can tell she's just a tick early. The success that Alabama has had from Hevlin, from Jenna Johnson, has been being later and trying to rip it to the opposite side of the field. That time, Giles takes ball four and two on for Alabama with one out. And now the table is set for Kahalen. First pitch over to first, and Aguilar 
will step on the bag for out number two. Nice job by Olivia Volbeck to get that out of Kenley Kahalen, who's been on a hitting streak and a good play by the first baseman as well, Alyssa Aguilar. Two in scoring position for Bailey Dowling. One for two on the night, singled back in the third. Now 16 of 31 all time in her career against in-state foes during midweeks. And she's been seeing the ball really well at the plate the last few games. She has, and she's someone that is a senior with so much experience, and it would be really good for her to get hot for Alabama. That went over to Smith, though, and Lindsey Smith makes a throw to first to end the inning. Volbeck gets out of it. We're still tied at three. Defensive game from Alabama so far. And that's why we're all tied up here in the sixth. UAB trying to win for the first time ever against the Crimson Tide. And the heart of the order due up, Smith, Fallback, and Aguilar against Brisky. And maybe the right person to start off this inning, Lindsey Smith, we talked about it earlier, everywhere in the AAC ranks. 0 for 2 tonight. And she'll swing and miss there. Giles will throw to first to complete the process, but it's a strikeout for Brisky to start off the sixth. And a big strikeout for Jocelyn Brisky of the hot hitter and Lindsey Smith. This is a drop ball that skips the dirt. Marley Giles doing a good job of blocking it up, making the throw to first base for out number one. And look at the tail end of that sunset. It's been a beautiful evening. We arrived here at the park. It was north of 70, not much wind. A little chillier, but just as beautiful yesterday for that Alabama Sanford matchup. It was interesting talking to Coach Doherty about that trip to Florida last weekend, took on FGCU in a three game series against Florida Atlantic. And he was saying it was so hot compared to what he had come from up in Birmingham, north of 80, sometimes up in the upper 80s, and a Big bright sun that got everybody burned. And that's an adjustment that can have an effect on a game when you're coming from North Alabama where it's been in the 40s, 50s, sometimes hitting 60, but March in Florida is much different than March in Alabama. And a little heat there from Jocelyn Brisky. Ball back strikes out, two down. Jocelyn Brisky with her second strikeout of the inning on the drop ball. This time it's in the zone. And Olivia Ballback just swings right over the top of it. And A.J. Doherty will turn to a pinch hitter. Instead of Aguilar, it's Lily Crow. Senior from Moody, Alabama. One forty-three average this year. Two for ten in her career against Alabama. And she just missed extra bases. That one foul for strike one. is so good from Jocelyn Brisky. It's almost unfair to see how good her drop is and then for her to go to the rise. And you do not see that a lot, a pitcher able to get that over the top rotation on the drop 
and then also have a really good rise ball. Full count now for the freshman facing the senior. Payoff to Crow. Got her. Jocelyn Brisky strikes out the side, and she's got three in relief. Great in-state battle between two teams, getting a lot of respect from the polls. Aggies 5-1 and one in SEC play, and Texas State with Jessica Mullins, who's always dangerous. And the one thing not on that graphic outside of a league worth discussing, Texas-Florida State tonight. A big-time battle in Tallahassee. Seminole is trying to make a statement, but Texas leads it 2-0 in the top of the second with the bases currently loaded. And perhaps a lot of people are tuning in now to see what's going on here in Tuscaloosa. Tied up at three, bottom of the sixth. Olivia Volback has been spectacular today. The three runs given up, has walked three, struck out two, but has really gotten the key outs in big moments all night long. That's a fair ball from Clark. The throw is a hair high, but Strong recovery over at first by Aguilar for out number one. This performance from Ballback takes me back to last year. Kendall Clark rolling this one over to third base. And this is what Olivia Ballback wants you to do. She wants you to be early, to roll over, and get her infielders ground balls. And she has done so well tonight at mixing up the location of that drop ball, at times bringing it up at the knees, other times making it break into the dirt and she trusts her catcher behind the plate, which allows her to do that. But just a really good performance in keeping her team in the ball game. Now north of 90 pitches facing him a Broadfoot, who's 0 for 2. And Broadfoot has it stopped by Dorset. Can she do it again? No. Broadfoot beats it out for the one out single. This would have been a really good play by Hannah Dorsett. I cannot say I would have been surprised if she was able to make it, but the ball is just hit too far into the hole. She has to dive for it. And Emma Broadfoot legs it out for a one-out single. And Patrick Murphy will turn to a pinch runner for Broadfoot. In comes Kristen White, the sophomore from Phoenix City, Alabama. And we'll see if Alabama tries to put White in motion. Three of three in stolen bases this year, but remember earlier in the ball game, Drody threw out Lauren Johnson, who's stepping into the box now to face ball back. I'd be a little more interested to see if they put on a play here, something like a hit and run, a bunt and run, maybe not a straight steal, knowing that Jordy's arm is so good. Oh, that gets away. No play needed. Kristen White will stand on second with one out. Four wild pitches tonight for Ballback. And there's a walk to Johnson to set the table for her older sister. And if you're Alabama, this is the hitter you want to see at the plate tonight with the adjustments she's made. Had that solo home run, great piece of hitting. One for three. And on the year, hitting 357 with runners in scoring position. But we showed the graphic a moment ago. Volback has been really great in these moments, holding Alabama to one for seven risk.
And it's because of that pitch right there. That is so tough to barrel up for anything with power because of where it's located. It's on the outside corner, right at the bottom of the strike zone. And you see the situational numbers there for Alabama, two for nine with runners on, one for seven with them in scoring position, two for seven with two outs. And it's kind of one of those double-edged swords when it comes to analyzing those moments. For Alabama, no, those are not the numbers you want hitting situationally. For UAB, like we said, Volbeck has been great in the big moments. And it's exactly like you said, that's the thing. It's not performing necessarily so well on the Alabama side, but it's also Olivia Volbeck doing what she does because she is so good in the circle. Johnson, that's off the glove of Colette. Kristen White will come in to score. And Jenna Johnson steps up to give Alabama the lead here in the sixth. Jenna Johnson has the adjustment off Olivia Volback. She lets the ball travel, get to her. She stays in her legs and just goes with it. Tips off the glove of the second baseman. And that's the go ahead run for Alabama. And a chance for more with Callie Hevlin. Two for two, has reached three times. And a pair of Johnsons on base. Lauren Johnson at third, Jenna Johnson at first. ball hit Lauren Johnson. Good thing she is in foul territory. Now Patrick Murphy wants to have a word with Aaron Golden behind the plate. And he'll chat with Hevelin. But he knows that she's able to make the adjustment and let it get deep and I think he's just reminding her of that. That's on the ground to third. Smith will throw home. It was the right choice. Johnson's out. And Patrick Murphy instantly said he wanted that one reviewed. It's out, so there's got to be evidence. And the call is confirmed she was out. Underrated part of that play as well. Smith did not feel that cleanly with the glove, but barehanded the ball and made the throw in time. And now two gone here in the sixth. And a really good job not to rush herself when she made that error. Picked it up, made a good throw, and it was in time. Two on for Abby Dukesher. Over to Smith, and she will step on third to limit the damage. But Alabama grabs a run, and now UAB will have the top of the order. A couple RBIs at Homer as well in the third. And now UAB will turn to 6 7 8, starting with Colette.
popped up. Broadfoot's there for out number one. Jocelyn Brisky's rise ball has been really good tonight. She's got a couple swings and misses, and this time she gets the pop up, but you can tell that that pitch is moving. And UAB will turn to a pinch hitter. The freshman from Sterlington, Louisiana, Hope Tucker. Two for nine on the season. And keep in mind, if Tucker can reach, Miles and Dupree are waiting in the eight and nine spot, both two for two in this game. Two misses low. Fielder for Alabama is Larissa Pruitt. And Brisky catches Tucker looking for out number two. Brisky brings the rise ball in the zone on the outside corner. Great location right at the belt for strike three. Two gone for Hannah Miles. The sophomore is two for two with an RBI, and the Tuscaloosa native will try and keep this game going. Two. Got her. Giles will throw to first to secure the victory for the Crimson Tide. 